Dime. Really? Again with the truck? Who's that? Down here. Leave that truck alone. You promised me upgrades. Come to think of it, I don't feel so good. This is not happening. I'll shove a hubcap up your ass. So will that make it real for you? Oh my god, this is stupid. Well, I ain't done with you. Get back here, truck lover. Oh man, the check engine light came on. I told you, bitch. What? Hey everybody, Paul here, and today we're going to take a look at a faulty O2 sensor. I got a check engine light on the vet, and I'm going to show you what a pain in the ass it was to take this out and put a new one in. Before we're doing anything, we got to get this car off the ground. So what we're going to do is I got a buddy who's got some tire ramps. We're going to get some uh, two by sixes, and then we'll stick a jack under it and get it the rest of the way. I had the jack under it, got the jack stands under it, and I realized, yeah, that little jack's not enough to get this car really up though. So I had to go get a new jack. There's two upstream sensors, two downstream sensors. Two upstream sensors are just down on the headers, just before you get to the cats. The downstream sensors are just past the cats. So bank one is the driver's side, bank two is the passenger side. I should be able to find the, uh, the connector and the sensor right down along next to the header on the passenger side of the car. Alright, so car's up in the air and uh, this is not going to be easy. You guys look right down there. I can see the O2 sensor and there's just a crap load of stuff between me and it. So. We're going to give this a shot. This is going to be probably the hardest thing I've tried to do yet on this channel. So, hopefully I succeed. Man, that's out there. The only way I'm going to get this off is from underneath. There's no way to break this from above. i got to see if I can... I mean, god damn. This thing's like in the worst fucking spot, man. I looked up Cook's headers. And... According to them, the best way to get that O2 sensor out is to remove the coil cover, disconnect the spark plugs, take the header down, lower it down through the bottom of the car, and actually remove this, the O2 sensor. So we're going to look at that and make a decision on whether or not we want to mess with that. battery posts so there's no power to the car. Next step is take off the cool cover. I'm going to number each one of these plugs so I have the correct wire on the correct coil. It came off pretty nice and easy. I like that. All right so this is this is going to be number one. We're going to tape it and label it and we'll label the coil too that way there's no question if I come back later One. All right. Spark plugs. I'm not sure where the advantage is to removing these. There 
Boom. Yeah, that don't look too good. Okay, so this is number one. I'm gonna set these off to the side so they don't get messed up. Got the bottom disconnected we've got the plugs disconnected we got the spark plugs out now it's time to disconnect the header so there's six bolts going into the block it's an aluminum block so that's what we're doing This comes out because uh, if not, I'm, I don't know what to do. All right, so I just pulled the header off. Uh, it just kind of dropped down about six inches. Since it's dropped down, I now have access to that O2 sensor. I'm going to see if I can get that out. Man, that's light. Holy shit. Ugh. And voila. Well, it took a few hours, a couple extra steps, got me an O2 sensor off the car. Pretty shot. We got a replacement here. Got a little bit of copper, whatever. I forget what they call it right now. I'm too tired to even remember, so don't beat me up over that. But uh, we're gonna go down. I'm gonna put this one in. Before you put it on, you gotta take this copper packet, and you need to put it. You need to put that stuff all the way around here, so it seals correctly when. You put it in, screw it in. That way we get a good seal. Everybody's happy. Just like so. I'm gonna reach up and see if I can feed this in here. This ought to be good. This wasn't hard enough the first time. Let's try to be any easier to put it back. sucks about this is I gotta put it all back together to know if it worked. So we're we'll gonna start, we'll go ahead and plug in our sensor. So I'm gonna put the gasket back on, I'm gonna hook the header up, then I'm gonna go underneath. I'm gonna reattach that real quick. Might do a little time lapse to speed this up for you. It's getting late in the day, it's 103 or 104 today. Let's try to get all this done in just a couple hours. It's uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon now. So here's our gasket. You know, give you an idea. Kind of got this beveled side. The beveled side faces the block. All right, I got everything on the underside kind of in place and ready to go. So now it's just about tightening these guys up. We're going to do get all our stuff originally tightened and then I'll come back and hit it with the torque wrench. Half, half inch. Here we go. That's 10 pounds. The next round, we 
up this to 15 foot pounds. I went and got me some anti seize, and I'm going to go ahead and put my plugs back in. And this is number one. So all the spark plugs have been torqued now to proper spec. Uh, if you don't like torquing spark plugs, it's your problem, not mine. Don't yell at me about it. Yeah, there's one mistake that I've made here, and I don't know if it's going to be a big deal or not. It just means I might have to climb in the back of the car and roll the windows down. When you take the battery, uh, the battery, if you disconnect the battery. When you turn the battery on, you have to re-index the windows. Uh, otherwise, you know, they won't slot up and down when you open and close. That's relatively minor. But usually, you're, I think the, the, the book said to roll the windows down before you disconnect the battery. Oops. So I might have to climb into the car when the battery's reconnected, roll down the windows. Oh, well. So... All right, so here we go. We got our we got our plug wires. Once again, we're gonna start from one and work our way to the right. So, whew, God, good Lord. I move the camera. I may have. Didn't mean to. Hook up the back battery. See what happens. Well, there you go. We've completed the O2 sensor swap on the vehicle. It's a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. Uh, originally, I thought you just kind of go under there, you break it off with an O2 sensor socket, and then you replace it. Well, got a little more involved in that. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but it was a good experience. And I hope this really encourages you guys not to be afraid to take on some of these tasks. But the big thing to look at is uh, make sure you check for the proper torque settings on, uh, on your vehicles. Look up as much information as you can on the vehicle so that you know what you're getting yourself into. Don't be afraid to take on a task and don't be afraid to ask questions. The best resource are forums. Not just searching forums, but join one. If you got a car that you're doing a lot of work on, join a forum on it. There are a lot of really smart people that already have done what you're trying to do and they'll be happy to help you out. So I hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you next time.
take two. I wasn't ready. Do it again. All right, action. Oh my God, I won the lottery. No, you Fuck didn't. Do these tires make my butt look big? This is really happening. Holy shit, I got a talking car. Y'all better not make me out of some redneck. This is 30 weight. I asked for 10 W50. Forgot what I was doing. I was in love with a Ferrari, but she slowed me down. Cut, cut, cut. I'll be in my trailer. What the hell, man? Subscribe already!